Dr. Uh, Johnston, as I said here, that with the rise of information, with how much access individuals have to different sources, stating medical news, whether it's the internet or, you know, getting WhatsApp messages, there is this trend, rising trend towards self-medication. What do you think individuals need to remember, however, when they move towards it? Well, I'm never too sure in this country, in the United Kingdom, why self-medication is that popular. Um, you get your, your um, medication uh, at very low cost from, from the National Health Service, and there's no real requirement to self-medicate. But that doesn't stop people taking particularly herbal medication, uh, the things like uh, St. John's wort, which is supposed to help with depression, uh, and other uh, herbal medicines that are available uh, in uh, shops on the high street. Those can cause problems with existing medication that you might be taking. So there are issues involved with that. And of course, the other issue, I think, which is a growing problem, is self-medication with um, analgesics, um, pain medicine, um, and people taking uh, too much or too often uh, with uh, analgesics, with pain medicine. Right. Now, how much is much here, especially when we talk about over-the-counter pain medication that many individuals feel like has become a part of their daily routines? Well, I think you've said it exactly there. It's become part of their daily routines. Taking pain medication should not be part of a daily routine uh, unless you're under medical supervision. And even then, you need to be careful that you're not taking too much because when you're, you're given these prescriptions, there are there's a specification to how you should take them. You should just not take them uh, all the time, and you should take as little medication as at all possible. That might seem strange coming from a clinical pharmacologist, but you should not take medication unless you really 